Fifth page in, down the bottom.
a uh, few minutes after seven, call the meeting to order. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Uh, the acceptance of the agenda has been moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. Walk in. Any walk ins? Yes. Yes, walk in. Hi. Hi. Come right Hi, up, Jen. Oh, okay. Good, how are you? Um, I'm Jen Gagan. I know some of you. I live at um, 65 Common Street here in town. And I'm here with a group of other local residents hoping that we can. Um, Jen, one second. Yes. What was that you can't hear? Yeah, could she move the mic a little closer? Yeah. To the mic me? doesn't actually go here, the mic is only for the television oh. people. Okay. So. Sorry. I'll try it's a to question project. of whether that's we have. That's one. very good. Okay. <laughs> it's a question of whether we want to hear or whether you want to be cool. So that's the question. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, anyway, I'm here with several other um, local residents from my area. We were hoping that we can start to generate a productive discussion regarding the consistent water discoloration problems that we face each and every summer, which um, do go through June, July, and August in the areas that we live in town and um, how we might improve this problem moving forward. We're looking for a permanent resolution to the water problem, and we just weren't sure where else to go or how else to start, <clears throat> so we came here. I think you've kept, I, I, I'm thrilled that you came because it's a problem that's not going away. Mm -hmm. We've been dealing with this problem for, for years. <clears throat> As some, someone told me the other week or two ago, we're running out of stories. We're running out of why this is happening. We've just used about every excuse in the world. And they're all legitimate. Everyone, I mean, these are all reasons why it could be happening, but no one really knows why it's happening, to be perfectly honest. There is no magic solution and we can just do it right tonight. Uh, but something has to be done because there are situations with, in town where people have actually water that's not only brown, it's black. Uh, and it goes from black to tan to brown, so it's it, it's just unacceptable. You, you, no one has to live like that. It should have to live like that. So I welcome you coming in tonight, and, and this is a perfect place to start. Uh, again, I, where it'll go, <coughs> where it'll go, I have no idea. Okay. Uh, but I think Al Bankett is all over it as best as he can, and even he, who knows more about it than anybody, is saying. I almost don't know where to go from here, you know. So open it up to the board and any comments. But I, I mean, I wasn't sure exactly how much information we're allowed to provide to you today, or if we have to do it at another meeting. But I, I don't even think. I think you can save yourself that step. Okay. I think that this board in this town is well aware of the situation. Okay. So I'll just add my two cents. I have brown water as well. I know Rick. Last meeting said he did. I don't know yeah, about you guys. I have it also. Um, and the few things that happen is just the water usage in the summer goes up and it stirs up the rest. And we have very, very old pipes. I know when we have this meeting, Al will bring in this hunk of iron in his uh, office that is all covered with sediment in it. And that's what causes it. And the salute, the long term solution, I think, is what we're doing. And that's trying to replace these old, old pipes every chance we get an opportunity to do it. Um, but we all have it. We get a ton of emails about it. And, you know, unfortunately, there's no solution. There's not a switch that says, okay, no more brown water for the residents. Um, you know, it's just what happens when fire hydrants go, water usage goes up, and the, that, that with the uh, old pipes that we have or what causes it. I think one of the concerns for the residents that are with me this evening, um, along with myself, is that we do have other friends that live in town, but possibly different areas of town, such as over the other side of 3A, near the Booth Hill area, that report to me they never experience water problems in the summer unless someone has actually tapped a hydrant in their neighborhood. So I guess that's the confusion for myself, is why it can be one way in parts of town and something completely different in another part of town. We have situations, this will be Rick next, uh, I've talked to people in the past week whose next door neighbor doesn't have a problem mm -hmm. and they have water the color of, of that. So, so it's, again, that's part of the mystery, you know, and, and we'll solve it. We'll get to it. Rick? Yes, if I could just add in, and hi, Jen. Um, 
just to reiterate, the water is 100% safe. It's 100% potable. There's no health risk whatsoever, regardless of the coloration. <coughs> Obviously, the main thing is uh, it tastes pondy. It's the only way I can really describe it. Um, and it stains laundry um, big time and other issues like that. But it is 100% safe. So, um, And it comes and it goes. As Mr. Vignani said, there's replacements that we're doing. You know, water rates have been increasing by about 5% every year. We plow that right back into infrastructure. Actually, throughout town overall, it is getting better overall, looking at the community on the whole. But individual neighborhoods still have more problems or less problems. There's also issues such as, um, as Mr. Vignani started to talk about a little bit, that during the summer with the increased usage and the way the water runoff works, we tend to use more or less water from the reservoir. That requires more or less treatment from the water treatment plant compared to well water, which is the cleanest stuff we have. So well water doesn't need to get as processed, although it does go through the water treatment plant. It can go through the water treatment plant faster compared to reservoir water. So all these things play in. Mm -hmm. um, we are the water commissioners, so the buck or the bottle does stop with us. But as Mr. Norton said, we are completely working with DPW on it. By all means, come to us. Don't feel like you don't have the right to come to us or anything. We're all ears. As Mr. Norton said, we're talking with Al Banger and his group and Jamie DeBarros. We have a water resources committee that's looking at this and their meeting. Um, and also feel free to go directly to Al because why come to us and then wait, you know, wait for our next meeting in two weeks? Any information you all have, the community has, for Al in terms of which houses, which neighborhoods. Um, for example, Mr. Norton or Mr. Vignani said, I have it this year. I had it for five days this year. I haven't had it in four, four years. And then five days, it's been fine ever since. So it's spotty. Any of that information you have, get to Mr. Bangard and his team and Mr. DeBarris and their team because that information will help them. We are getting concerned that we're chasing our tails and we're chasing a moving target, um, as Mr. Norton said, um, but we're getting there. But by all means, all the information uh, you can provide us will be helpful. Go but on. again, it is 100% safe. Don't worry about that at all. John. Sure. Jen, um, <clears throat> I've been in touch with Jen for about two years now, and, and I know that her neighborhood tends, I don't know whether it's because there's a dead end or something with the loop, I'm not really sure, but her neighborhood tends to have an awful lot of brown, black water, and it's been fairly consistent. It's um, consistent. I know they've, they've shared with it. I heard from you, Jen, actually, and I know that. Uh, I've heard from Greenbush having problems <coughs> and people on Turner and Sand Hills. And, mm -hmm. you know, the one thing that I think was interesting, you mentioned people in the West End or people in certain areas don't have it. That's something we should look into. Um, I know that the water is, is safe. That's what uh, Mr. Bangert has, has indicated, that the DPW, the town has, in fact, I know, Jen, you were the one who gave Mr. Bangert the sample that he drank here about a year ago that was pretty gross. Yep. I, for one, am not drinking any of the disgusting water. I no. do bottle water, something. And I know it's been an ongoing problem for the past two weeks. The board is well aware of this is probably the biggest problem we've had to date this year uh, because it impacts all the residents. Unfortunately, because everything's subsurface, it's not above ground, we're trying to figure out what's going on below and what's causing it. Yes. It's not that easy. Yes. And so we are trying to approach it. I know it's tough because we'd like to have the, the, re, the, the panacea, the, the, the solution tomorrow. But it's like Rick said, I mean, I had brown water for a little bit, now it's white, and then it kind of gets a little decolored, and I have no idea why. Um, so I, I know basically we're, showing, we're trying to tell you, we're trying to address the issue. We don't have a solution yet, but we're hoping by doing all these little things, not little, but various um, solutions to try to improve it, it's going to work. But I will say your area tends to be impacted more often than not, and I think as a town we need to look at that area to make sure why. Well, what are we going to do, Jen? Uh, what we'll be more than happy to do, and it would be a good idea. Uh, let's set up a meeting. Al, Al is on vacation a couple of days this week. Okay. So as soon as he gets, as he gets back, if you could call Kim Donovan at the end of this week or the beginning of next week, set up a meeting with Al, your neighbors, mm -hmm. and let's and, and he, he'll fill you in. Oh, I, I've spoken with Al before. Yeah. I mean, I guess, and I'm, I'm happy to do that moving yeah. forward because I would like to do anything that we can to try and help slowly resolve the issue. And I understand that yeah. 
it is a problem that maybe is not curable overnight. I'm completely understanding of that. I mean, I have information, you know, it's been a, a problem in my area for 10 years, but I even have emails and information going back to 2010 when I was a little more proactive in trying to talk about it um, and responses from Mr. Bangert and things that were actually done in my neighborhood that were supposed to help improve or solve the problem. So I know it's a, it's a small step-by-step -step process. I guess I'm feeling a little <coughs> disappointed that um, more recently when I'm trying to communicate with them about it, um, they seem less than pleased to hear the continued reports. I've um, I think they, pro <coughs> they were probably hoping that these measures that they were taking over the past couple right. of years would work. Right. <coughs> Obviously, they haven't, uh, and that's the frustration I think that that they're feeling as well as you're feeling. Right. You know, and I, I say let's let's all work together right. on it. I, I understand that. I just feel like a lot mm -hmm. of times we just all get told the same things. We'll run it off in your yard for 20 minutes and it should resolve or you know different little things like that that just We're unfortunately don't stories. work I mean, it's been years and we've just found about every reason in the book why it's happening and we'll try to address those reasons and it doesn't solve the problem so right. you're right it's it's set up a meeting with, <laughs> with your neighbors and um i'll be more than happy to attend and, okay. and try to go with al and uh, maybe even um jimmy de barrows and try to figure out have more of a discussion to try to figure it out. Okay, that would be great. Thank you so Blue much for your time. No, oh, sorry. Okay. Thank you. Thanks for Thank coming you. in. Thank you, ladies. <coughs> Excuse me. Moving along. Uh, applicants for the Conservation Commission, the Public Buildings Commission, and the Renewable Energy Commission. If I may ask uh, conservation to come up first, and that would be uh, Richard Harding. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. How are you? Good, thank you for coming in, Richard. Uh, this is an opportunity we ask where, before we appoint somebody or where we're thinking about appointing someone to come in and just say hello. Absolutely. You're, you live in Hamarok, I believe. I That's correct. I saw. Your interest is in conservation. Yes, it is. I've been here for 13 years, full time, and about 25 years overall. My wife's been here for 65 years. Okay. So, uh, uh, we have a vested interest in the town of Situate and Humrock specifically, but in the whole town. Okay. Board? I, uh, <clears throat> see, uh, your sales background, I don't know what, you know, it, obviously conservation is a very technical. It is, and I'd be lying to you if I said I knew all the nuances of it or anything. I'll have a lot to learn. I've already, you know, looked at some of the things. I know some things, the flood the plan just went into effect today, the new one, and um, I, I'll have a lot to learn. However, since I run my own business out of my house and it's being phased over to my partner in New York with time, I have the time available perhaps to do this. Oh, it's not a bad thing. It's just a, you know, it's definitely a learning curve. Oh, yeah. That committee is one where, you know, you're kind of at a disadvantage initially because you don't know everything that the other guys do and then eventually you catch up to speed. So. I'm not afraid to ask questions. Rick knows more about it than me. Mr. Murray. Yeah, thank you. Um, I'm really interested in your application. I, I thank you for um, for uh, expressing your interest. It meets every other week. Yes. And they're long meetings, and I'm pleased to hear you say that you have a lot of time because it's one of those committees, like most, actually virtually all committees, where most of the work happens not at every other meeting. Correct. It's in the intervening time period because there's a lot of time put in for site visits. And the way that the particular demographic of that committee happens to be right now, they really need somebody to be able to get boots on the ground and go out and look at things. So, uh, so you're around a lot. As I said, my uh, my office is in my house, so I'm here all the, virtually all the time. Yeah. And um, since I run my own business, and it's a type of business where I could start at six in the morning and finish at midnight, but I don't have to be doing it every minute. Right. I have some flexibility in my schedule. Yeah. Okay. And then the other thing is, is um, if this comes to pass. <coughs> You should really get a copy of the Wetlands Protection Act yes. um, and also familiarize, familiarize yourself very much with um, all sorts of restricted areas like Hummer Rock and other beaches because between beaches and the Wetland Protection Act. Whole town. That's it. Yes. Yeah, that's the whole town. Okay. So, thank, thank you. you. Anybody, Sean? Uh, just, I didn't know if it said in here, are you an associate now? Have you attended their meetings? I have not been to their meetings. I was just uh, approached about this less than two weeks ago. Okay. 
and uh, from a neighbor of mine, and then from uh, one of the one of the members, um, Scott Pipes, and uh, and I got interested in it. Good, good, great. That, yeah, just on. just a few questions, uh, sure. Mr. Harding. Um, one is, um, <clears throat> what piqued your interest in, in doing this? Aside from maybe somebody asking you, I mean, wh why all of a sudden conservation and not some some other committee? Um, as I said, I've been in Hum Rock for 13 years full time and over 20 years overall, and I have seen, among other things, the deterioration of the beaches there, the wetlands there, the riverside. Um, I also do some work in the archives here and look back at the maps from 30, 40, 50, 60, and 70 years ago and where there were roads that were planned that are now totally underwater. Um, it's just, you know, there's a lot of protecting to be done, and it isn't just Hum Rock. I mean, it goes all the way up to Minot. And uh, so a lot to learn. I don't pretend to know a whole lot about it, but it seems to me that it, it's worthy <coughs> of keeping it protected and um, working with the residents to make sure they know what they have to do, too. And I, I don't mean this in an um, insensitive manner, but do you, like, um, winter out of state for a significant period of time? No. Um, We're here full time. That's that's what I'm, I do I, take I, a vacation sometime. Wrong with that. That's fine. Other than that, we're here full time. <laughs> Sometimes people will end up leaving for three or four months at a time, and and the problem with that is the committee meets a lot, or right. various boards meet a lot, and that's that's an impact on the board. The other is, um, I know Mr. Murray was mentioning it, but you know, um, do you see that the position entails taking what I call field visits or site visits, going out to the actual site and looking at it? First thing I was told about, it, and actually that to me is fascinating. Uh, to be able to go and see exactly what you're talking about. And again, I'll have to learn the rules and regulations. I have been over the wetlands material uh, at least once, but I'll, it'll take a long time to learn it. But I know you have to go to the, to the homes, to the sites, and visit them and, uh, and learn what exactly they're going to do and then maybe even go back and see, make sure they do it. Believe it or not, you answered my next question, so I appreciate it. And thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank, thank you. you sir. Appreciate it. Uh, the decision will be later on this evening. Um, all right. The next applicant would be uh, Jacqueline Carr. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? Good, thank you. Jacqueline, you put down conservation of public building commissions opening on both. Like, yeah. Say um, hello. I'm a new resident of Situate. I moved here just over a year ago yep. and have started to get involved with the um, public building, the master plan that has been going around, so I've been trying to educate myself on that, and um, you know, I have young kids, so I'm fascinated with the project because of the impact on the schools, but I'm also trying to get more involved in the community since we've decided to make Situate our home, and so I thought that this would be an opportunity to um, really get involved with more of like the town government aspect, and um, I think that both of those boards are going to be impacted by the master plan, and so I think that, I, like the previous gentleman said, I can't claim that I have any vast knowledge on either topic, but I think that um, knowing my personality that I would probably be able to catch up pretty quickly on something and be involved as a pretty active member. Great. Great. Comments? Do, do you have, um, looking at your background, you seem well suited for the Public Buildings Commission, and that's one of the ones that you requested, am I correct? Right. That's probably um, the one I'm more interested in, to be honest, um, just because of the master plan project that's going on. Thank you. That's great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, in renewable energy, uh, Justin Moran. Justin, how are you? Come up and. Hey, sir. Fine, thank you. Uh, certainly a, an area we're all becoming more and more aware of and interested in. Very just good. If you could just give us a background and. Sure. Uh, just moved to Situate about uh, four months ago. Um, also decided to make Situate our permanent home. Broke ground on a on a new home uh, a couple weeks ago. Um, Good luck with it. Thank you. <laughs> Going to need it. Um, we have three small <laughs> children, so uh, we're definitely putting down some roots. I thought this would be an excellent opportunity to uh, volunteer my time on a topic that I've got a lot of uh, passion about, uh, made a career around, uh, built a business around, and uh, would love to be able to... Uh, uh, volunteer my time to, on, on the committee. Great comments. Just John, just, yeah. Have you ever been involved in prior to this town, other town uh, committees no. or boards? No. Um, 
you know, I, I thought it was interesting. You mentioned about uh, sustainability and energy efficiency with your home. Anything unique that's unusual by comparison to your home that you're playing? I don't know, green technology, is that what you're oh, suggesting? We're going to put in a, a wood pellet boiler, certainly. Um, but uh, And then uh, we're going to be following uh, the stretch code, which obviously uh, here in situate um, is mandated. Uh, so... Um, uh, beyond that, nothing, nothing crazy, nothing. The only other question <laughs> I had was, and I don't want to, was that uh, looking at your uh, letter was that do you have any vision or anything that the what the town has doesn't have already that maybe you could actually add or bring to the renewable uh, committee? Uh, well, I'd, I'd be sort of remiss to think that a uh, a biomass solution, whether that be pellet or otherwise, would be a, a great fit for uh, uh, situate since I obviously don't know anything about the current infrastructure and uh, you know how old the current boilers are and, and, and things of that nature. Um, but um, you know, certainly uh, in Maine, at least where we make the majority of our pellets and, and sell the majority of our pellets, we've got a lot of municipalities, including schools and hospitals and, and commercial. Um, uh, companies that uh, have switched uh, to wood pellets for a permanent solution. So, um, again, uh, it may not be the best fit for si Situate going forward, but um, I, I know my way around a, a contract. Look and, at. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Um, yeah, given the fact that you're in that business, uh, on the one hand, that could be a really, you bring a lot of expertise to the table. Uh, of course, should there be a uh, interest in moving that direction because you are in that business and in the sales of those products you'd have right. to probably recuse yourself from those discussions and all that sort of stuff right the pellets that we that I, I, I completely recognize that and agree uh, the pellets we sell uh, are manufactured too far away so they wouldn't be economically viable to deliver them to this area yeah. as a permanent solution and you're aware of what we're doing with wind turbines and solar and all this I am you know just just what I read online sure. I think um, all right, great, thanks. Thank you. I just, oh, go ahead, Tony. Uh, yeah, just the time commitment. I think uh, John may have brought it up earlier. You have three kids, you said? Yes. Yeah, so uh, yeah, obviously we have a lot up here as well. So it's, it's just a big time commitment in terms of this stuff. We're one of the leading green communities in the state. Okay. So it's a very active committee. Okay. And, and we're looking for good, uh, um, you know, experienced people, and which obviously you have. Those who don't see, he sells wood, wood pellets and, uh, Bi other biomass products so um, you know that's just one thing to be aware of that right uh, it probably comes in spurts but it is you know a big time commitment. I do have some flexibility I do pretty much run my own business um, and I my office is in Hingham uh, so I'm never too too far away I, I am on the road every once in a while um, but as long as I was aware of when the committee met obviously I could make arrangements uh, to be locally during those times I just look forward to having them on the board just yeah. to bring a little different perspective. Um, you know, we have a couple of, you know, local um, yard waste companies, and maybe, you know, with your background, you might be able to give us some insight or the town or so forth, something like that. And sure. I just, you know, it's in very interesting. Okay. Have you ever heard of seaweed pellets? I was just going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I we haven't. We have a lot of seaweed. <laughs> you mix that with your wood and... <laughs> To all the applicants who, who have just appeared before us, we're not going to make the appointments so much later in the evening, and, and I say this, don't feel like you have to stay around uh, until we make those appointments. I mean, feel free to leave, go home, uh, it may be two or three hours before we get to it, so we wouldn't wouldn't expect you to stay here for the length of time, so. Watch feel, it on TV. Feel free to leave. Any and eat ice cream like the rest of us wish we were. Yep. <laughs> Channel uh, 10. Next would be a uh, discussion uh, on, on a GATRA new program, new shuttle bus uh, route. Uh, we've asked Frank Gay, the director <coughs> of GATRA, to come here. It's a very interesting and new uh, uh, proposal being put forward to the town of Situate. Other towns have it and run successfully. Frank, welcome. Thank you. How you doing? I'm doing fine. I've known Frank for quite a few years and he runs a great uh, Greater Alabama Transit Authority and does a great job over there. So welcome to Situate. Frank, I guess the best, best way to start, uh, 
Pam Davis. Pam, Council yeah. What, would you, how would you like to do it? Uh, would you? You want? You're to running the show. I don't uh, have anything to say unless you have a question. I'm okay. filling in for Florence, so I uh, have to attend tonight. The yeah. how the. Uh, Council on Aging approach Frank and jump in if I even speak here, which is quite fine. possible, uh, to show their <coughs> interest in, in obtaining from Gatra a bus service, a shuttle bus service in situ, similar to the, that which is held in other towns, which other towns have. And basically, it would be a, a, a bus, a Gatra bus, Greater Animal Transit bus, that would travel among certain spots in town on certain days of the week uh, to pick up passengers to maybe go from uh, Greenbush to the harbor or wherever the, the, the route is, and we'll get into the route in a minute or two. Uh, it would be a kind of a trial program. We, you know, we're not signing up onto, onto anything that's gonna be uh, here for years if it's not used, so I mean, we've had People in the past ask us time and time again that this, for some sort of a bus shuttle service, something to get around, especially the senior population who, who <coughs> sometimes don't drive, uh, and they would love to have some method of transportation to get around. This could be it. Frank? Well, what I, what I thought I would do, just take a couple minutes. I, some of you I haven't met, and uh, thanks for having me come down. Um, just talk about the authority. I just gave you our annual report from last year. It just, you know, talks about some of the accomplishments, what kinds of service we provide, where we get our funding, and, um, you know, pretty much um, how our operating expenses are, uh, are divvied out for the, for the previous fiscal year. Um, we do, you know, we're a political subdivision of the Commonwealth. We receive uh, federal uh, funding for both um, operations and for capital projects to buy equipment from the Federal Transit Administration. We receive state funding from uh, MassDOT um, for both operations and again to buy equipment and do capital projects related to mass transit. And also, um, you know, funds come through the local assessments from the cherry sheets for the towns that uh, participate and have service. So now that the town is situated as a member, um, once we start providing services into in the town, there would be an assessment from the off the cherry sheet for the for the appropriate <coughs> cost for the service just for the town of Situate. Um, our legislation is different from the MBTA uh, in the fact that um, it's a really it's a local partnership with the uh, with the authority. We only can operate service in the town that the town through you have authorized us to do. The, the types of service, the level of service, you know, how many days a week. So you'll have a, a good indication before we do any kind of service in the town, you know, what, what you estimate for service and then what the estimated cost for the town would be for that kind of service. So, so it is different from the MBTA. We're not going to come in and say, well, here's what we're going to run in the town and, you know, send you a bill. Um, we really work closely with the town, with the planning department, um, council on aging, uh, and you to, to talk about services that the town feels that it would be important for its um, residents to have. And um, the town did become a member in, in May. Um, this past, uh, well, starting in July, we are, have signed a contract with the town for the Council on Aging uh, service that's run through the Council on Aging. That's to pay the town back on a monthly basis for the service that's provided through the Council on Aging. Uh, for seniors and people with disabilities in the town. It's for, you know, the local uh, transportation that seniors use and, and people with disabilities uh, call ahead. Uh, what Patricia and I and, and um, Laura Halbato have been talking about is um, a proposed shuttle route that um, I think you've seen now a draft of the route. Uh, so I'm just really here tonight to, to talk about that with you, get your input. Um, we will probably from this have um, at least one or probably two kind of open public meetings to try to get uh, local input from residents, maybe do something through at the Council on Aging uh, to try to get some, um, some other uh, local input into what will be the final route. Um, and again, depending on what the town feels is important, um, <coughs> as far as the days of the week that we would have service, the, the number of hours of, of service, those are things that, that we would sit and, 
and finalize with you before we would go out and, and actually operate service. Um, just one other point that I wanted to make is that the authority doesn't operate anything directly. We contract all of our services out. So as in the case right now with the, with the Council on Aging, the, the town and the Council on Aging is a contractor for GATRA operating service in the town. Uh, when, we went, when we go ahead and, and um, finalize a route for a shuttle, uh, we would have to put that out for proposals and, and look for private transportation companies in the area that would submit proposals to operate the daily service um, that we put together for the schedule. So, so the route, um, I, I'm sure you're all familiar with at least where the draft is. I don't know if you want to go into any details about the, of, of the draft. Um, Again, it's something that uh, uh, Patricia and I and, and, and Laura at least uh, met a couple of times and, and put this together as, a, as an option to help some people get to the train station, to help uh, people get to the Council on Age and do some local shopping, possibly uh, for, for people to get service up to the town hall and to the, to the school, to the schools in the area um, adjacent to town hall as well. So um, I just you know, here to really answer your questions. Why don't we open it up to the board and uh, Tony, I'll go, go ahead. ahead. I think it's a great idea. I mean, obviously, it's a pilot program. It costs the town money, so we've got to see what the usage of it is, is what Joe mentioned a minute ago. Um, I don't know if Katie can get it on maybe one of the, uh, if you spin that around and put it out here, maybe we can get it on television. If, if you probably lay it down, she can find it. But it, it, uh, it deals with mostly um, the south end of Situate, not north Situate. Again, it's a, kind of a flaw in it, but it's a pilot program that we're just trying to see if it works. It hits all the main pickup spots and all of the main, um, you know, uh, the places that you want to get to, which is great. Down in the harbor, the library, um, the train, um, the high school. Um, unfortunately, you know, for seniors there's not always a central spot that they can get to. It's great that it goes to the Central Park and goes to Wheeler and goes to Kent Village, but for people that aren't in those facilities, it's tough to have somebody drive to a pickup spot when they could probably just drive another two minutes and get to their destination. But I think it's a great start. I think we've got to figure out what the plan would be in order to keep it into our, in our budget and our constraints financially to see what the usership of it, of it is and then decide from there how, how we go and whether it expands to something bigger. Um, but I think it's a I think it's a great idea, and um, and we'll see if the if the people like it. I'd be interested to see what this council on aging thinks of it, um, and uh, and what they think the usage would be. Rick, I agree with everything Tony said. One question I have is about the funding, and um, regardless of the answer, I'm in support of this. I'm just curious about it. Um, so it says it comes right off the cherry sheet. If it is above the MBTA assessment we currently pay, we'll be responsible for that in terms of reduced aid coming back to the town. So is this kind of like a deductible? Up to a certain amount, it's already included in our, in our MBTA aid already, so at no additional cost. But if it goes above a certain amount, then it affects our budget. Yep. So as proposed, you're saying it would exceed, in our estimation, our free amount? Well, that depends on what you ultimately decide. I think the delta was about 20,000, Frank. Yeah, a little over that. Between right now. what um, it's costing off the assessment to run the transit service and the COA now. Okay. And then the shuttle route, which is really designed to try to get people to the harbor and from Greenbush into Widows and also secondarily hit the hot spots for seniors and people in town who might not have a car. Um, depending on what the ultimate route looks like, that, that cost will pyramid. It's about $450 for an eight hour day. Okay. Thanks. <coughs> John? Yeah, um, I, maybe this is either with, um, not with you Pam, but probably Trish. You'd mentioned a few days a week. Do you have an estimate like how many days? You're thinking three days a week? Are you thinking, what's initially? What's your pilot? Well, I mean, I think, you know, as Patricia just said about the the, the funding, um, right now to to get it off the ground with the funding that we have would probably only be probably Thursday, Friday, Saturday kind of a service. But 
Um, we're looking to see if we can, you know, find some other federal and state money that we could actually put towards the operation. So by the time we finalize the route, um, I, I might be able to have some indication, you know, back to you how much other federal or state money we could put towards this, you yep. know, for the operating costs. In addition to right. that, isn't it that if somebody gets on the bus, do they also pay like a, a quarter or 50 cents to get on also for... for well, our current, uh, it's currently a dollar or, or 50 cents for anybody senior or... Um, uh, with student. a disability or a student. student, so it would be 50 cents for them, a dollar for a regular rider. That's what our current fares are yeah. in the Taunton Attleboro area. So we'd probably use the same type of fare structure. Does that, here. Does that, that fee that's generated or the, 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 the amount of money that's generated, does that go back to the town or, or I say town for, for funding really this, or does that go back to Gatra? It re just reduces the, you know, the, okay. the overall operating costs. So it, it you doesn't, you know, amount, it amounts. Not going to be about eight, lot. ten, twelve percent of the operating <laughs> costs. You're not going to generate a lot of money from it. Um, the only other question I had was an observation, which was I saw the route, and one of the thoughts I know I think you said you're going to talk with Council on Aging about it. Is that mm -hmm. they haven't had any meetings yet on this, have they, no. Pam? Yeah. But my reason for saying it is during the summer it might behoove extending it from the harbor and pushing it out to the lighthouse to come back. Um, one reason because because it, it's going to go right by the community center. Mm -hmm. So it's a route that I think, you know, could be m more useful and um, helping a lot. There's a lot of density out there, a lot of people during the summer who I think would use it. So just a sure. thought that maybe you consider. Can I ask a question? If, if the town, this is totally um, off the wall, I guess. If the town is going to save $93,000, $95,000 off of what we budgeted to pay for the senior drives now that the town is paying, and we're going to get the same amount of money off the cherry sheet. Can we, if we have to, can we use some of that money that the town is saving because we don't have to put out the cherry sheet money and the ninety-three or $95,000 that we're putting out now? Can we take a little piece of that if we have to supplement this to get it going? Is that a possibility? Does that make sense? I have to, I have to refer to Tricia. I, 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 uh, I, I think... I think one of the things I tried to reiterate in my memo is this is a pilot because we have to establish a need. Right. And if there's one person on the bus every four hours, That's then spending 100000 of the town's money doesn't make sense. I Budgetarily, agree. I agree. Yeah. we can't do that without a town meeting because you have it sitting in one pool. Okay. And so it has to do the other. So the hope is to get the board to sort of give some instructions to Frank so that we can schedule a public hearing and then get the optimum days, hours, mm -hmm. duration, calculate the cost of that, and if there's a gap, then look for other ways to, to stuff that gap from other sources maybe, if that's what the town determines after the public hearing. And what we want is our initial pilot. Right. And then if we're able to sustain the program, then those are what those funds will be. But since okay. it's the first year of Gatcher too, mm -hmm. we have to see how all those different funnels of money play out before we start to say, oh, we have a net savings over here. But I think to your point, there'll probably be some left to do that. I mean, that's a potential area. It's mm -hmm. just a big part of this is trying to establish a need. Right. Because that's really what's going to ultimately sustain it so we can continue to do it year after year. Yeah. Okay. Tricia, can you explain what, what are you talking about in the $93,000? Is that what GATRA is coming in under the um, MBT assessment? 95, 90, the I senior center 95. is funded to provide the transit service now. Gatcha's taken over that. That cost is coming right off the MBT assessment that um, we currently pay to the MBTA. That MBTA assessment is now getting shifted over to Gatra. So what PM is referring to is the money that's in the Council on Aging Bunny uh, to a certain extent won't be fully expended in FY13. So the actual budget for the Council on Aging for vehicle services. Mm -hmm. So if, if just some quick math, if we're going to allocate $20,000 to this project, that's about 45 trips. So if we take a three-month period and do it, how, you know, two or three days a week, you know, I think that's kind of the way to assess if that's what we want to allocate to this and see if there's a need. I would imagine the summer would be more um, active than... The winter, I would guess. Mm -hmm. um, 
But the challenge is we uh -huh. have to have the public hearing and then the route, ha Gatcha has to put out the route to bid. Right. So best case, we're right. looking at, what did we say, Frank, it October yeah. 1? So it's a fall well, yeah. project. It's a fall. I mean, we're not, yeah, we're not going to be able to get it started in time to service the summer tourists this year. So, I mean, well, we're really looking. So we're looking at the fall or the winter. The type of service this year, holidays. Okay. All right. Uh, comments from the floor at all? Ann Burbine, yes, Ann. I think uh, there will be a public hearing in. I think that may be an excellent time to bring that up. Uh, I mean, no one certainly, as you know, is trying to exclude North Situate. It's just a matter of economics. Uh, but if everyone's convinced that that's a good way to go and the ridership will be there, I'm sure no one's going to say no to it. So thank you. There was another question. Yep. Hi, Chris McConaughey. Yes, sir. <laughs> I just wanted to ask um, whether any um, advertising or Well, we, we haven't come up with any, um, you know, marketing plan for it as yet, so, but we, we do market our other services, so we we would use that, um, and we have a, we have a, overall a limited marketing budget for the authority, so, I mean, but we would take some money and use it for marketing to, to try to get this off the ground. You know, public, put, it, put, put information on the town website. Um, gets the information out to the schools, certainly to the Council on Age, and try to get some information out around town and didn't do some uh, local advertising as well. So. I just wrote that down, Chris. I think that's key. You know, if we want to get people to go, they've got to know about it. Yeah. So there's got to be an effort, whether it's from Gatcher or from the town itself, to market it and, and let people know. Well, here's a cheap way of doing it. If we can put like a 10 to 15 minute segment down, 10 minute maybe, that seems, 15 may be too long and put on SCTV and have it run and run and run and run. A lot of people look at our television and that's a great way, it doesn't cost and it would work well for information. So what do we need to do tonight? Do we I, need? I think we just have to endorse this and, and if the board feels, uh, was there another question? Uh, just one other comment on the behalf of the EDC, we have no knowledge to the uh, We just, we'd be happy to be involved in the marketing promotion of this type of project. Could be an integral part of the economic development strategy. I think uh, the town administrator said it well that we'd like to see it be successful. Yeah. Uh, when it happens and how it happens. Uh, so we're more than happy to be involved uh, in helping that move forward and how the market promotion could happen uh, to make that occur. Whether it launches in the fall or maybe later in the spring, uh, those are the types of factors we'd like to weigh in on and try to get the business community Sam, why don't we, uh, Tricia, why don't we make sure that Laura includes uh, the Economic Development Committee yeah, she'd already told me that and, everything, and everything, and just, that's great. So do we need a motion or what? Well, I think it's to a, the board? I think it's exactly what the chair yeah. said, is that if you're on board, that gives Frank some indication we can go ahead and schedule the public hearing, get the feedback from the community, and um, come back to you with the results of that so we can then have you formally vote to contract with them to do the RFP. Move to um, support a Gatcher shuttle bus route for the town of Situate as presently proposed. Second. Discussion, further discussion? Just one, one thing, the two other things we're gonna do is can we get a, a route dri driven up, excuse me, written up for North Situate to see what that would look like or at least stretch up to the senior housing up there and also you're gonna look into other state or federal funding that can help fund this. I mean, the more money we have, the more routes, times we can run it, and the yeah. more active it'll be. Yeah, one of the things but we were cognizant of doing this route is if the route is 45 minutes long, people wanting to go to Widow's Walk from the harbor or from Greenbush to the harbor aren't <laughs> going to do an hour route. So that was sort of how we backed into it. 
but I think the community needs are going to drive that first because day in and day out, those are the folks who are regularly going to be using it. But what a, you know, you'd mentioned about two to three days a week, but if we get the information out, you might be able to have two alternate routes. Two days a week you do this route, one day a week you do that one. So at least people who are maybe North Situate might say, hey, look, this is the day that I can give you the route. So in other words, you might be able to have another alternate source to be able to get everybody. But we'll map out North Situate. I mean, we were very aware that North Situate was out of it. And we sort of wrestled with how many senior housing complexes could it hit on the original loop. And it may not be in the first pilot, but maybe you can stretch out a little bit. Who knows? All right. Question, yes. Good point. Good point. All right. Frank, thank you. Okay. Tim, thank you. Thank you. I need a vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Frank, thank you. Pam, right. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Unanimous. Uh, <laughs> Seaport Advisory Grant, Mark Patterson. Mark, welcome. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mark, fill us in on this, would you? Yeah. Um, my name is Mark Patterson. I'm the Citrus Harbor Master, and I'm here tonight to talk a little bit about the uh, Commercial Town Pier, uh, its rehabilitation and potential funding. Um, so basically, the pier. Um, the, the Town Pier is the primary support facility for the Town of Citrus year-round commercial fishing fleet. It is home to about 15 of our largest um, fishing vessels, um, gill netters and draggers, and it's also the um, main source of provisioning um, for all of the other fishing boats that are out on moorings. Um, it's also uh, a hub of activity for fish buyers, fuel and ice sales, uh, and many other ancillary businesses that support the community. Uh, in fact, the total economic value to the region uh, on an annual basis from the town pier is about $6 million. So it's a fairly significant uh, amount of money. The Town of Situates Master Plan, um, the Waterways Management Plan, which was adopted last June, and many other planning documents all recognize the importance of maintaining the vitality of the commercial fishing industry in Situate. Um, specifically, they talk about things like the importance of ensuring that commercial fishing activities to continue and are not displaced from the waterfront. Proposes uh, The Master Plan proposes that the town pursue state and federal funding for infrastructure modernizations that support commercial fishing. Um, using that sort of as our mandate, uh, in 2010, we applied for and received a $30,000 grant, $30, grant from the Seaport Advisory Council um, to do a feasibility study of the town pier. Uh, so in 2010, the town, town hired Tibbetts Engineering Corporation to do an evaluation of the pier. Um, and their existing condition survey revealed several deficiencies. Um, and some of them, uh, they were prioritized, and some of them actually had to do with structural components of the pier. Um, so stuff that really couldn't wait very much longer for attention. Um, we took the findings uh, of the Tibbetts evaluation, and we used that as the basis for another application to the Seaport Advisory Council for funding for the design, engineering, permitting, and construction of the needed repairs. And just a word about the Seaport Advisory Council. The Seaport Advisory Council is a group of um, folks who are hired to identify projects um, that, for funding that um, rehabilitate critical maritime infrastructures, uh, particularly those in support of the commercial fishing industry. So we thought that this was um, a project that was a very good fit for Seaport. When, the town of when we go to Seaport, we're competing um, with many of the other major ports of the north and south for funding. Um, ports like Gloucester, Salem, Boston, New Bedford, and Fall River. Um, so this money is, is difficult to come by. Um, and we went a couple of rounds where we were not selected, um, but we were very pleased in March of 2012 when we were contacted by the um, Seaport Advisory Council and asked if we would consider hosting their spring meeting at the Situate Maritime Center, um, an invitation that we were very happy to um, extend. They also notified us that at that meeting they would be um, voting on the Town Pier project. Um, so on April 5, 2012, the meeting, which was chaired by Lieutenant Governor Tim Murray, was held at the Maritime Center and the Council voted favorably to support um, an 80% funding of the project. 
the project was estimated to cost about four hundred seven thousand um, dollars. So Seaport's contribution is three hundred twenty-five thousand six hundred dollars. The town's portion um, of eighty-one thousand four hundred will be requested at the next town meeting. Um, those funds will come from the Waterways Enterprise Fund, which currently has retained earnings of about four hundred six thousand um, dollars. So. Um, it's our hope that the board uh, will support this request in the fall. Very good. Very good recap, Mark. Uh, board comments? This is great, um, Mark. Uh, I, I think we're all supportive of it. Great. The um, question I had with the, uh, the uh, pier was, is there any concept of trying to maybe enlarge it to increase the commercial fishing to um, more fishing? I think the recommendations from Tibbetts did not include um, any physical expansion. Um, one of the things we, we did talk about is perhaps expanding the utilization of the pier. And when I talk about that, um, some people get nor nervous and they think that we're trying to displace the fishermen. Um, and in fact, that's not at all what uh, I'm talking about. I'm talking about opportunities that already exist in the harbor. For example, um, we ha we're very fortunate to have the headquarters of the Stellwagen Bank, Bank National Marine Sanctuary in the harbor. There's an awful lot of scientific research being done. There's a lot of um, data that's being collected, and um, these scientists need vi vessels. Um, they need a vehicle to get back and forth from, from, the, um, from the ocean, and it would be, an, I think, a great fit for some of our commercial fishermen who are regulated in the number of days at sea that they can fish um, to look for opportunities like that so that, um, well, we're not talking about um, replacing them. We're talking about giving them added opportunities. Um, so physically, um, Although it's not out of the question, it hasn't been recommended yet, but certainly um, in terms of the utilization of the pier, yeah, we're going to get some expansion. Yeah, just to chime in, um, I was at that meeting, as was Tricia, the, the meeting that was held at the Maritime Center. And as usual, Mark is being quite humble here. It's quite thrilling seeing our own Mark Patterson and John Murphy, who's chair of the Waterways Commission at the time, go up and make presentations, followed by the mayor of Gloucester, the, the, the head of Fall River, and compete with these big, big guns in terms of impact. And it's great just seeing Situate be so well, so well thought of by this. Um, and then just another more contextual comment um, is that this does represent sort of a continuum from what Mark and the Waterways Commission have been doing. You recall town meeting just voted a, an improvement in the regulations for the commercial fish boats in terms of using moorings. So for the um, last, you know, several years, We've been working a lot on the maritime, or on the marine park and the boat yard and all that, and we're we're returning to really focusing on the fish pier and other aspects of the harbor, and um, you know with those mooring regulations for the commercial fishermen and this, uh, th there's a lot of improvement, and it's so critical to our culture and critical to our to our business businesses that it's really a great thing, and you talk about enterprise funds funded by slip fees and mooring fees and everything and, and restricted for use for the harbor, this is exactly the sort of thing that's restricted for use. That money is coming from the harbor and it's going right back into the harbor. And 81 grand is leveraging 325 grand. Thank you. Comments? Just great job, Mark, you and your team working hard, like, like Rick said, against these big communities. And just to repeat, we're getting, we give them 80,000 and we get 325 in return. So we get, you know, some serious work done to the, the pier that's necessary. So great job. Thank you that won't be available next year or the year after. Huge. Thanks. Motion? Motion, please. Move the Board Selectman vote to support the Harbor Master's recommendation to fund the town's match of $81,400 for the Seaport Advisory Grant and further that this item be added to the next town meeting warrant. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Further discussion from the floor? From the Board, seeing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Agenda item number six is a discussion vote special events permit mass race for the fallen for, for the fallen military friends. We have someone. Thank you. How are we doing? Hello. Hello. Thank you. Thank you for coming in. If you just bring us up to date, introduce yourself and uh, bring us up to date. And 
Good evening, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. Um, I want to thank you for the opportunity to be able to speak about the Military Friends Foundation and our new project, uh, Massachusetts Run for the Fallen. My name is Sergeant Major Kelly. I'm a retired Sergeant Major, an Iraqi combat veteran, and a president of the Massachusetts Military Friends Foundation, a nonprofit uh, serving a nonprofit serving Massachusetts National Guard, Reserve, and families of the fallen for nearly a decade. I'm joined here tonight by my fellow board member Megan Slack, whose brother uh, Specialist Wade Slack was killed in Afghanistan in 2010, and uh, Sarah Lakins, uh, Sarah, Sarah Lakins, the Military Friends Executive Director at the back of the room. The Military Friends Foundation is proud to administer the state's Military Family Relief Fund, question 32E on the Massachusetts State Tax Form. Citizens across the state make voluntary donations each year through question 32E, which support military families and families of the fallen. Today, we're seeking a special events permit from the town of Sichuan to host the first run for the fallen on <coughs> September 8, 2012. This, this event will be a 5K run and is modeled after the Run for the Fallen events that take place in a dozen states across the country. The purpose of, the, of this event is simple, to run in honor of every Massachusetts service member who has lost their lives since the war in Iraq and Afghanistan began. Each mile of sweat and pain and each flag saluted is to pay homage to the service members' life and their family. We run to raise awareness for the lives of those who died, to rejuvenate the memories, their memories and to keep their spirits alive. We run to raise support for programs that assist families of the fallen and to aid in the healing process for Massachusetts residents who live and have been affected by the war. The uh, Massachusetts Run for the Fallen has no political affiliation or agenda, but simply to honor those who have fought and those who have fallen under the American flag. The, military, the program is designed to be a community event. This event is open to immediate family members of fallen at no cost. We request a $25 donation from others who wish to participate. Donors will receive a limited edition Mass Run for the Fallen t-shirt and a barbecue dinner. And the donations will help offset the cost of events and support the needs of fallen comrades. The Mass Run for the Fallen will recognize 169 fallen service members from Massachusetts or who have ties to Massachusetts. Each name will be read out loud at the event's opening ceremony. In preparation for the permitting process, we have had the pleasure to work with the town officials, including Sergeant Gil Martin of the Citroen Police Department, Christine Chessier, and the state delegation. These individuals have helped us develop the plan we present tonight for the run route, opening ceremonies on the town green, and the post-event festivities. Thus far, we have 100 registered participants. Our success for this year would be to have 300 registered participants. At this, uh, one of the things that we did is we'd want to thank the Gold Star Father, Joe Kelly, and the uh, Situate Veterans um, Association Council and Rep. Jim Cantwell for their support in helping us bring this event to the town of Situate. There's more information about the Military Friends Foundation and the Mil Massachusetts Run for the Fallen. It's available at Military Friends Org and the, uh, and the Massachusetts Run for the Fallen. Again, I thank you for this opportunity to address you tonight. I look forward to addressing any of the questions and concerns that you have. Thank you. Rick Murray. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. And thank you, sir. This sounds certainly like a um, extremely worthy event um, for a whole plethora of reasons. Um, I do have a couple questions for you, and I appreciate you handing out the information. I see this um, this piece of paper, for example. Have you distributed these around? Have you, has this been advertised yet at this date? Not as of yet. We put out on our website that there's a potential, you know, for the run for the fall. Okay, we on this date. Ex exactly. Um, we have, uh, as you well know, but so people in the audience are aware, um, there's a process that special event permit application that needs to get signed off on and approved by police, fire, DPW, and all sorts of other things. And I, and I saw in your proposed route that you want to end this at the um, Marine Park boatyard area over there. Yes. And we have um, a memo from Mark Patterson, the harbor master, um, recommending um, that it not end there because of the working boatyard. And since you mentioned you already have 100 people potentially signed up for this potential date, and you're saying your goal was 300, that does sound like quite a large impact. So I was wondering what your thoughts would be on if we change the location slightly of the of the end there, for example, to. Uh, Peggy Beach parking lot, which is just down the street. I don't know if you know where that is. I, I, I'm um, not sure. I think I do. 
instead of, when you go over the causeway instead of turning left to get to the that to the boat yard you turn to the right and there's a public beach there and or changing the date because that is a extremely difficult time for uh, harbor activities a lot of people are pulling boats the harbor master expresses what I feel are very valid concerns that's a working boat yard there's travel lift hauling boats all over the place it's it's not a um, uh, a good dual usage in my personal opinion at that location and I say this with nothing but total respect for the event and total respect for what you're trying to achieve I'm raising this issue solely because I want you to be successful and I want to go as smoothly as possible so I'm wondering what comments you might have about that most uh, in, in other runs, uh, runs like this most people show up they make the run and they depart a lot of I'd say about 60 percent of the people actually leave most of the people that be there will be the, uh, the families of the fallen for the most part you know, we anticipate having buses there. And most people come up, finish the run, they turn around, get on the bus, go back and get their car, and they leave. Sure. You know, I've, I've ran for 30 years in the military, I ran hundreds and hundreds of runs, and I've never hung around for anything. Majority of the people sure. leave. I, I understand that, but there's, there's still quite a large impact on that very congested, very active site. So, in fact, when you say it's not just the runners, it's their families, so now I'm starting to realize 100, 200, 300 people times two you might be, or three, you might even be talking more people than just the runners, so no matter how short a time. So I, I sort of, have you thought about an alternative ending location or a different date? Uh, we have considered uh, both alternatives. I think at this point, if the end location, if the, our approval was going to be contingent on changing either the date or the ending location, we would probably prefer to adjust the route because we've looked at other dates and what's happening with military families and the dates surrounding, the weekend surrounding. Yeah, that makes sense to me too. And yeah. um, it was, we, we took a lot of care in selecting yeah. the date. I, I think you would find, I think you would find that the total distance of the race would be just about the same. The same. Yeah. Whether you go right or left, uh, you know, right to the Peggy Beach Park lot, mm -hmm. it's much bigger. Um, Take a look at it. We de definitely, if it was we contingent on that, that. we definitely mm -hmm. do that. Yeah, it's a perfect place to have it. John, you're gonna run right by it. Maybe even loop back to Peggy Beach parking lot. Uh, that I can't think of a better cause to have a race. Mm -hmm. If you want to run it on Fourth of July, I would support it. Christmas, it doesn't matter to me. And if we can tweak it a little bit, but if you said you couldn't. Then I'd support wherever you want to run it. How you know, we could fix so. it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Sarah is our executive director. Hi, Mr. Chairman, board. Thank you, and I, my apologies for um, joining. I uh, I just have a question in regard to the Peggy Beach. Um, when we met with Sergeant Phil Martin uh, in June, we understood that there were beach that the beach would still be open at that time, and they suggested that might not be a location that would be a possibility because of people parking. But the beach permits, I'm not fully aware of the nuances, but I wanted to just bring that up because mm. that was something that previously had expressed some concern in regards I, I to I think, and, and I'll just speak for myself, for, for some reason, once September 1st comes, you could have a 95 degree, you could have a day like today, and people, for some reason, their mindset is back to school and beach is not a, a big priority. It's it probably- Labor Day, Labor Day weekend? not Labor Day weekend, is no. it? No, is it? Um, it's the no, week I after. believe yeah. that's the weekend prior to after the weekend, I weekend after, yeah. after. Yeah. Weekend, weekend after. after. That's a good after. point. It was Labor Day weekend. Labor. I, yeah. I yeah. didn't correct it, but yeah. it was. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I just Our checked. Event. Yeah. I would yeah. check with yes. Sergeant Martin again and, and tell him we brought that up and have him take another look at Peggy and in light of the fact that the, the boat yacht is going to be so busy. That's all. But again, I think I speak for everyone here that whatever you guys come up with is. It's going to be done. Well, Joe, you know, we just completed a CPC project there. The plantings are all new. The sidewalk and the grounds have just been laid. Um, you mean the at, boat the, at the boat yard? Yeah, and yeah. with the boat yeah, traffic, it's, it's I a, think Peggotty would be the ideal situation. Uh, take a look at it. We, we will. Go ahead. Go ahead. I, just, I just think it would be better. I think it's larger. The shore yeah. run has ended right. there. Um, we have a lot of races right, right. start and finish there. And as, as Sean mentioned, if the distance is a problem, you can run back to it. You can run back around and get back to it. Um, so I, I emphasize, I, bring the, I brought that up originally to 
help and the success. We appreciate right? that. Okay. We, we really appreciate do. that, absolutely. So if there was an issue in terms of act, would there be an issue if, if we did look at that and it met with your criteria in terms of if there wasn't access that day for people who had beach parking stick it to stickers at all to access that or would we need to When's uh, the race? Is it in the morning? Law accommodate. 11 September to 8? 2. 11 it to 2. It starts, yeah. That's, uh, I, just, I want to double check that that's not Labor Day. It's not. It's not. It's not. Yeah, you'll find the parking lot. If you went down there, you'd see that you could find a, a you could take a quarter of that parking lot just for your own tent, et cetera, et cetera, and not affect anything. Okay. I, I think. I do too. Yeah, so. You just leave the spots down by the beach vacant and like mm -hmm. Joe said, when you come back to the entrance, it's it's quite big. They're much bigger than than the maritime. Much center. bigger than the maritime center. Take a look, look at it. And get back to Sasha Gabbat, and I will vote this tonight. Uh, contingent on that. Contingent on that. Well, that would be great. That would be wonderful. That'd be great. Further discussion from the board. Motion. A motion, please. Move the board select and vote to grant a special event permit to the Massachusetts run for the fall and for Saturday, September eighth, two thousand twelve from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. per the conditions set by town departments and the town administrator, and in particular, um, uh, Peggy Beach as the, um, Peggy Beach parking lot as the end Finish. point. Finish. And just a quick plug for yourselves, how do people get involved with it? Well, we have two I, websites right there. Okay. You know, we Where, have two like, uh, but did you have something to say? We have two militaryfriends.org. And then we got uh, MassRunForTheFallen.org. People can register on the ma MassRunForTheFallen.org website, and we're reaching out to as many of the families of the fallen as we can uh, contact through. So maybe we can, once we get it all finalized, maybe we can get it on the website as well, just so people. That would be excellent. That would be great. Thank you. And, uh, I'd like to just note before we end to thank the community and all the help since April that we've been working with. I know you and many of your staff um, to bring this together and one of the things that came up in our last conversation with the police department here in Situate is that we look forward to uh, through the notification process of residences um, the residents here uh, to host an event that Military Friends Foundation will do um, at the police station to invite folks down in the community to pick up free American flags those who want to come forward and learn more about what's happening to decorate their own yards and we look forward to meeting what we understand are very patriotic members of your community. So thank you very much. Thank you for all you do, all of you. Thank, um, you. thank you. Thank you. Need a second? No. Oh. Second. <laughs> Motion been made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Here's the. Uh, that's what uh, oh, okay. Item all number right. seven. We'll, we'll take another look at it. Thank you. As a, uh, event Jim O'Connell had commented to. Announce, I guess, the vote, which would help many community, many residents in the community who, uh, because of their closeness to the shore or whatever, pay additional flood insurance. And with Jim's work and the Conservation Commission's work, uh, they've been able to do something that will help bring that cost down a bit. Okay. All yeah. yours, Jim. Okay. Well, thank, thank you, board members, for the opportunity to provide an update on the community rating system. Uh, these periodic updates uh, describing what the system is and what goes into it is, I'm hoping will enhance all the residents who live in the floodplain as well as the residents in situate in general, and give them an appreciation not only of the many benefits that they get by situate's participation in the community rating system, but also the incredible uh, efforts by many of the town departments that go into establishing the criteria that Situate has met to have reduced flood insurance premiums and a safer place to live along the, along the shore and in our inland uh, floodplains as well. Um, I want to also uh, recognize there's a volunteer committee we have, the community rating system. There are five volunteers that participate um, in the community rating system. Uh, David Ball, Michelle Moran, uh, Rosemary Dovey, um, Doris Crary and Michael uh, Rotowski uh, and they've been participating in the community rating system volunteer as a volunteer uh, effort for a number of years and I, I want to recognize that and, uh, and appreciate their efforts as well. Um, the goals of the community rating system are 
uh, not only to provide a safer environment uh, to live in not only the coastal but the inland floodplains as well, but to ensure and enhance additional um, participation in the National Flood Insurance Program. And basically what it does is it creates a, a comprehensive look at um, the coastal and inland floodplains to reduce property damage from flooding and to basically to protect, protect the people who live in, the, in these floodplains. Um, the community rating system was started in 1991 by the Federal Emergency Management Agency. It's a volunteer, a voluntary program to participate in. Um, there, it, it, it runs on a, a, a merit system. Basically, there are uh, a series of activities. Um, there are 18 activities that a community can voluntarily uh, participate in. The more activities you participate in, the more points you get. The more points you get, the better rating that you get. Uh, at the, uh, the ratings run from class 10, which every community that participates in the National Flood Insurance Program is automatically a class 10. The benefits you get from that are reduction of flood damages and protection of lives in the floodplain and protection of the beneficial functions of the floodplain itself. Uh, the beneficial functions of the, of the inland and coastal floodplains are not only when you look comprehensively at a floodplain and you manage your development and your construction practices appropriately, not only do you reduce um, flood impacts to dwellings and, and, and buildings and, and people in the floodplain, but also the floodplains, if you can keep them open and do appropriate development, the flood, uh, floodplain areas act as filters for, for, for rainwater, which help protect groundwater resources, and eventually that groundwater exits into our ponds and our rivers and our coastal areas. So it's not just the protection of the buildings and the people who live in the floodplain, but it's also protecting the, 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 the resources, the groundwater and the surface water uh, throughout the entire community. So, they, so um, with the system based on a series of points, there's 18 categories. Uh, the town of Situate through through many departments, Department of Public Works, the Conservation, Planning Department, Department of, Department of Health. Um, they have achieved uh, a, a, a class eight, uh, a class eight in the community rating system. What that means is when you start at 10, the classifications, the more activities, the more points you get, you go down from a class 10 to a class nine, to a class eight, to a class seven. A class nine receives everybody, every resident, every dwelling in the inland and coastal floodplain receives a 5% reduction in their flood insurance premiums. A class eight, which is situate, um, re, um, every participant in the uh, National Flood Insurance Program receives a 10% reduction in their flood insurance premiums. Now, for example, um, a dwelling in, a, in, a, in an area that receives wave activity along the shore uh, would generally pay anywhere from, anywhere from $2,000 to $5,000 per year if they're dwellings are below the base flood elevation, we'll get a 10% reduction. You're talking 200 to maybe $500, $500 a year. That's pretty significant. So not only are we saving the money, or helping residents save money, but we're also basically protecting the, the beneficial functions of the resource and the dwellings and the, and the, and the, um, the, the basic, basically the function Let me just well. jump in here before we leave that, that thought. You know, that what we're saying here is that residents and <coughs> mine it, Shore Acres, First, Second, Third, Cliff, Hammerock, uh, who are forced uh, into buying flood insurance because of the work that you've done and, and, and other departments in town could see as much as a 10% uh, reduction in, their, in, in, in the cost of that insurance. And I think that's, that's huge, and thank you for doing that. Yeah, yeah. And if I could, if I could just, uh, the acti I just want to very briefly, the activities that we're participating in, just so you, so you and the, uh, basically the residents in the, in the, in the floodplains can appreciate the efforts of many of the town boards. For example, we, we keep elevation certificates in the, in the um, building department, um, a, a flood map information service. Anybody can call the building department, the planning department, the conservation commission, and talk about what, uh, what zone they're in, what that means, what type of construction practices they could use to minimize or hopefully eliminate flood damages and protect them, the occupants themselves. We do outreach projects. Just about a month ago, we had a flood information workshop down at the Harvard Community Building. Every Every town department head participated in that. We had maybe 40, uh, about 40 um, um, members of the community to come in. We had somebody from the federal government, somebody from the state government, somebody from an insurance um, insurance industry come down and just field all the, all the questions they could from the from the residents. Um, we do flood protection information, open space preservation, the Community Preservation Act, as well as gifts that we get uh, from um, from parcels in the floodplain. Uh, we get we get points for that higher regulatory standards. Situate 
uh, exceeds the minimum standards by FEMA. FEMA has actually admitted in, in their documentation that their minimum standards don't necessarily protect many of the, many of the <coughs> occupants and dwellings in the floodplain. So it's important to look at how you can enhance the standards without, without impacting the people who live there. For example, um, in, in, the, in the A zone in the floodplain, situate requires a one foot additional elevation of the first floor. Um, and so that will enhance protection to those people. There's a two foot requirement in areas that receive wave action along the shore. Um, we, uh, acquisition and relocation, drainage maintenance systems by the Department of Public Works. We get credit for that as well. So it's a, th there's a lot of work that goes into this by many of the town departments and by the volunteer board. So I, 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 I hope that the residents can appreciate not only their reductions in their savings and their flood insurance premiums, but the benefits that they get for reducing damage to their dwellings and the and the clean water that we have, the cleaner water that we have in our groundwater, rivers, streams, lakes, and beaches as well. So it's a, it's an incredible program. Um, I'm being um, badgered by the by our volunteers to see if we can meet a class seven this year, which would uh, which would result in a 15 percent uh, wow. reduction, as well as additional things that we can do to help minimize any further flood damages along the shore and along our riverine and lake areas as well. So it's an incredible <coughs> program. Thank you. I'll, I'll open it up to the board for comment. I know it's a very positive thing, and we're thrilled about it. Anybody? Great stuff. Saving hundreds of dollars of our residents, town government at work, hundreds of dollars. Uh, and I can't help thinking years ago, <coughs> Eleanor Foley, who was may maybe mm. the first conservation agent, I'm not sure, uh, brought that program to the Conservation Commission. Mm. And thinking back, I think Eleanor would be very proud and happy to see that it's still going and still going strong and it's still saving people money as well as helping the infrastructure. So yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah Sitch went into the program in 1991 to the and others along the way who kept the program going. It's a lot of effort, but it's obviously well worth it for many reasons. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Jim. Jim, thank you. Sure. Thanks, Jim. Uh, we need a special event permit for Heritage Days, August 3rd, 4th, and 5th. Anyone here from Heritage Days? I think, so. I think they are. They're in the hall. Actually. They're in the hall. I think they're late. Yeah, one day, Walt Licensed Maritime Center, July, August, September 2012. Number eight. Is anyone here from, I think, Tricia? Number eight. This is just an amendment to what you previously voted with two additions, I believe, right, Kim? And then as when we approve the rounds for the end of June and July, we ask that they get give us new dates pro prospectively for August. So this is just rolling what the new policy was for the one-day liquor license by giving them a bank and then backfilling the specific date. Motion. Motion. Motion, please. Move the Board of Select and vote to grant one-day wine and malt beverage license to pre-approved catering companies for events as listed at the Situate Maritime Center, 119 Edward Foster Road. Situate to include one additional event on July 22nd, 2012, and for events from August 1, 2012 to September 30th, 2012, contingent upon receipt of a certificate of insurance for each event. Second. <coughs> Motion been made and seconded. Discussion? Discussion from the floor? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Move the Board of Select and vote to grant 10 additional licenses from August 1, 2012 to September 30th, 2012 to pre-approved catering companies contingent upon the selectmen being notified of these additional events and receipt of a certificate of insurance for each event. Second. Uh, further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? It's unanimous. Uh, agenda item number nine is Dan Taylor and Adam Conrad from the chamber to speak about Heritage Days. I'm going to recuse myself because I'm on the Board of Trustees. All right. So, the I'm going to uh, I'm going to ask Tony to take this. Is the attorney for from Murphy Hesse to be? Yes, can I speak to you outside and I'll say we were going to take a break right after this, uh, but I realize you people have waited a long time, so. I'm going to try to avoid that break by speaking to him now, and if you would handle this one. Okay, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm uh, very well. Good. Why don't you tell us about this Heritage Days thing? Um, actually, this year, Heritage Days is going to be August 4th and 5th, and it will be a 
almost exactly the same as last year. So not the third? Excuse uh, third me, folks. Is... Could we uh, quiet down, please, so we could hear? It's really hard, even for us up here. Thanks. I can be louder. Okay. No. So, so third's um, Friday. Third's Friday night. Set it's, up. It, it's sort of an unofficial right. part of Heritage Day. But in terms of the permit, you'll need uh, Friday, so. the third, Saturday, the fourth, Sunday, the fifth. Yes. Great. And uh, you've, you've given us, <clears throat> excuse me, you've gone through the process for the events. Right. You've gotten the okay from the police, the fire, the DPW, the building. Are we having the carnival rides again? Yes. Um, health, recreation, harbor master. Okay. Um, the restrictions from the police chief in terms of the music. The setup's going to be the same as last year. Correct. On um, the street that goes by Rivas. Right. Um, and you gave us a nice picture of the layout. Are there as many booths as there were last year? It looks like there were more. There's more? Uh, actually, there's there's going to be a little less than last year. Right now, we're at about 90. So 90. So, so some of these will not be there. Okay. But you have room for 90, and then you have the food vendors down the... Uh, uh, the parking lot of uh, Cole Parkway. Right. Um, and all the insurance stuff is here. Yep. Any um, any new twists or is it pretty much the same as uh, provided uh, the weather's a little bit better on Sunday? Uh, I hope so. I hope so. We do have uh, Eddie Money's going to be the uh, headliner on uh, Eddie Money. Right? Oh man, you're bringing me back. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Steven Tyler going to swing by again? Never know. Never know. Yeah. Um, Warm Paps Blue Ribbon. The, um, any comments from the board? Rick? Yeah, my only question here is uh, what's the end hour? Uh, we because the chief wants the street open by 8. My notes indicate the chief wants the street open by 8. This is, you're so, talking about Front Street? Yeah, I mean, we need, we need to issue a permit to be held from 6 a.m. until... And I'm asking you to help fill in the blank. Or anybody up on the board or it says staff. all streets must be cleared and open by 8 p.m. with the exception of the music festival area on Friday and Saturday okay. music must end by 8 and the sidewalk on the south side of the music area must be a clear at all times right but we need a time right can you right. Um, yeah can you live with that oh yeah yeah it is, as a matter of fact the, the only area that we were concerned about which was why we we're asking for 9 p.m. was Jerry's area so that was why we we're asking for the 9 o'clock Okay, and I what think did you have last year? Do you remember what you had last year? My guess is the chief. As if I should be asking you guys. Probably eight <laughs> last it year, Dan. Right. It's Say probably again? eight last year. Probably eight. Yeah. I mean, Front Street and Cold Park will be open long before that. I don't know. So we said. So we're trying to accommodate one business owner. Is that what we're trying to do? No, the music. It's the whole musical stage. It's not. It's not this one business owner for his business it's because that's the main operation for the music this is um, Eddie money right. the aforementioned Eddie money okay. it's, it's just staging area right in here that takes right. takes longer to get out of there front street will be open and Cole Parkway will be open but it's getting that little section right in there so if we say um, or if we just shoot on the fly for 8 p.m. and say and the for Front Street and Cole Parkway and the music area must be done at nine. Yeah. That doesn't mean music playing, but right. cleanup is going on from from eight to nine. Eight to nine. Right. So music done by eight. Right, that's what the chief says. Yeah. Okay. Okay. On the fourth and fifth? That's fine. I'm thinking on the fourth it'll probably be earlier. All right. Okay. Yes. yes. Okay. So the motion will be front street. <coughs> And Cole Parkway, op open by eight, and the music area will be music will end by eight, open by nine. Yeah. Thank now, you. what about the parking in Cole Parkway? Are we doing anything different? We're actually this year we uh, we're focusing more heavily on the high school parking lot and the MBTA. Uh, we just talked to WATD, and they're going to be um, promoting the shuttle service. Um, We've also contracted with Lightell Brothers to get those those big signs, yeah. and it basically what we're going to hoping to do is have them set up one on the driftway area that just says Harbor Full use MBTA lot. So hopefully we can you know they won't even bother going down there and trying to find something. Well, they will. I know. But um, I, you know, the, um, it's good to hope. I guess the one thing is people should be aware of where you can't park 
because right. we get the emails after the event saying, why did I get a ticket? Why did I get a ticket? Right. So if we put those horses on Kent Street. St. Mary's. Uh, by St. Mary's, if, if yep. the police don't want you parking there, make sure it's it's right. marked pretty clearly. Yeah. Um, I think that's really the only area that we've had a lot of complaints right. is across from St. Mary's. Right. right. Where right. people can park there for church, but not for this event. Right. And it just puts a bad taste in those yeah, people's guys, mouths, and we right. get the emails. But um, I will say we've also done a better job with the with the uh, St. Patrick's Day parade and with this group as well, yeah. and the other events that we're we are slowly training people about the St. Mary's area. So I'm confident we're going to be think, able to. I do this. think too, once they realize how easy the shuttle service is, yeah. you know, everybody thinks that, you know I'll I'll find something down there. And when they get down there and they drive around for an hour, they realize they can. Yeah. Sure. Just a comment. Um, I, you know, we sit up here and you know make these decisions, and none of us live down there. <coughs> you know, so it, it. You know, I've said in the past, it's I put a lot of stock into what the neighbors have to say. Sure. But I think this year, you know, they're they're fortunate that any of the abutters, any of the neighbors, they just go into Rockland Trust and they can find you. <laughs> or South Coastal, they're gonna find you, Adam. Yeah. And hopefully they've expressed some of their concerns before now. Right. You know, because you want it to go as smooth as you can. Sure. So yeah, before you make a motion, I want to just hear what the neighbors, if they're already here tonight, have to say. You know, and uh, there were some minor things in the years past, and I'm, I'm sure you guys, you know, get better and better, and I hope it does. You know, so that's could we, yeah. If we're done, yeah. I just are there any hear. anyone here from the audience have any comments? I agree with Sean 100. percent Every year we get feedback, and every year you tweak it a little bit to make make you know we fence off areas, we <coughs> we move a little bit this way, a little bit that way. Um, there's always going to be some sort of complaints, but I think we're moving in the right direction every year. Motion. Please. I'll give us a shot. Move the Board of Selectmen vote to grant special event permit to the Chamber of Commerce for Heritage Days to be held on August 3rd, 4th, and 5th, 2012 from 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. for the regions including Front Street and Cole Parkway and for the music to end at 8 p.m. and the music area to be cleared by 9 p.m. and as per the conditions set by the town departments and the town administrator. Second. Second by Mr. Harris. Any further discussion? Trisha, did you see anything that everything else is good? Kim, right. was that, did that motion make some sort of sense? Very good. You guys good with that? Very good. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. It's a three zero. It's unanimous. Thank you, guys. Thank, Thank you, gentlemen. See you Thanks. down there. I said we were, we were planning on taking a break, but we just resolved that, and there will be no break. So we will move on to a presentation by Ms. Bernardi. Uh, thank you. Uh, at the, the meeting down at the community center a month ago, when we talked about the grand plan, uh, we spoke to you and invited you in for a future date. Tonight is that date. It's all yours. Thank you. I appreciate the opportunity afforded to me by the Board of Selectmen to present my proposal for the use of the Situate Harbor Community Building. I plan to be brief, and I would appreciate completing my presentation before any questions. I don't need to address the facts that the condition of the present senior center at Brook Street, or the fact that a new senior center has been discussed for many years with no result. That is information we all know too well. During the past years, I've had the opportunity of studying gerontology at UMass Boston and getting to know the staff of our senior center and the wonderful work they do under trying conditions. When I requested to speak to the board, I was asked whether I really felt, after a year and a half of discussion, that there were still questions in the minds of residents. I'm speaking tonight as a member of the community, a volunteer, and a person who has done considerable investigation 
into the Situate Senior Center possibilities, and I still had questions. As such, I'd like to present the following. I'd like to begin by talking about the mitigation language and restrictions. There have been a lot of questions about exactly what the MBTA and mitigation agreement was. We've been told that the agreement has restrictions on the use of the building, and that is correct. That is why I made my initial call to the MBTA and learned the following. MBTA money is public, and as such, must be for public use. This is the language of the agreement. The town will use the premises for the public purpose of open space and land preparation, preservation for outdoor recreation by and education of the general public. Public use shall include, but not be limited to, access to the harbor front and a view of the harbor. <coughs> This language is clarified in the expl explanation of our town's feasibility study, which I will review in a minute. I'd like to point out that when the terms were reviewed with me by the mitigation division representative, his comment was that a senior center would fit the parameters. So now I'd like to talk just about the use, what I propose as the use for the Council on Aging and <coughs> the community building. I'd like to talk about a couple of issues, the first being census. In the year 2000, that census, census showed 17,863 people made up our total population in situate. In the year 2011, 17,985 people made up the population of Situate. In 2000, 3,597 3, seniors represented 20% of the population. At the present time, for the seniors that we know of, we list 4,664 seniors which has grown to 33% of our population. This means there's been little change in the, t in the total population in Situate in the past 10 years. However, the greatest change is senior age population, and this demographic will continue to rise in the next years according to our statistical data. It is realistic to assume the present 30 to 40 year old generation will reach 90 years of age and their children will reach 100 years of age and beyond. What will their quality of life be if we haven't improved programming? Speaking of programming, the Council on Aging does excellent programming, but it wants to do so much more. On their wish list of activities, bereavement sessions that are in private respite days for caregivers, our own Meals on Wheels program for our situate seniors, health and nutrition sessions, intergenerational programs, computer classes. We actually have computers, but we have no place to teach. A dining room for larger events and senior gatherings, and a large screen TV area for sports events. As Mr. Jeff Nutting, who is the town manager of Franklin, who was the moderator of our master plan meeting for public facilities on June 18th, stated, but I'm, I'll paraphrase it, once that Franklin had a usable, welcoming center, the participation grew. Build it and they will come. We've heard this phrase again and again of no child left behind. I say we adapt that phrase to no senior left behind. 40 people get to attend a luncheon or an activity, and at least 40 more are closed out and stay home because of lack of space. The available space at Brook Street is 440 square feet for events in that event area. That's one room. 
versus 3,100 square feet at Pier 44, or the community building, however. Prior studies for a new senior center that were undertaken in 1999 and again in 2005 suggested plans for a center at 10,000 square feet, 7,200 square feet in phase one and 3,200 square feet in phase two. As a note, when Franklin built their new center, they went from <coughs> 11,000 square feet to 15,000 square feet, and this was when their town population was 20,000 residents. A multi-generational interface. It's been shown that the greatest successes come when there is an interchange between generations. The Gatra Transportation Program will be run out of the Senior Center. The bus service, which will benefit, benefit the senior population and hopefully the entire town, which will be beginning, as we heard, in the fall. For those who don't know Gatra, it is the Greater Attleboro Taunton Regional Transit Authority. This is going to be one more responsibility for an area in 440 square feet. I'd like to add my own congratulations to Florence Choate, the director of the Senior Center, for seizing the opportunity for this program and for following it through. The Senior Center has an operating budget already, which will transfer to Pier 44. As an important point, we should recognize that monies from their operation, operating budget have been returned to the town each of the previous five years due to fiscal awareness and excellent planning. Improvements, of course, there are going to be improvements necessary. A new kitchen, a dining area, a few offices. But I think we need to note that additional money was earmarked at the time of the sale using the mitigation money for necessary improvements to complete the building's needs. This information is listed in the feasibility study of the town. I'd like to just mention the feasibility study. <coughs> I think this is an area, for me anyways, that had a lot of misunderstanding in how it was reported, so to speak. I'd like to say that the time and the effort that were expended by the committee was tremendous. Two separate surveys were conducted regarding possible use of Pier 44. And if I understand it, one was sent to the town administration with the uh, probably most of the impact on their space and storage. The other survey was for residents. It was shown online and residents had to find the site to respond. The feasibility study received 1,011 responses. According to Mrs. Choate, from their information, only 10% of the senior population uses the internet. According to the report, the largest number of respondents favored park space. 18% was the number. With 1,011 responses, that figures to 182 people. And this figure doesn't really clarify the question, because the question actually had two theses. I'm not sure if you can see this that well, but I tried to outline what this was. This is the graph that was shown in the feasibility study. But the question, as I said, was in two parts. One was use of that site without a structure on it. The second was use of the site with a structure on it. So park space, marina, waterfront use, outdoor recreation was if there was no structure meaning the building would be turn, uh, torn down. With the structure, the responses were youth programs, senior programs, community meeting space, art and culture space, and infant and child space. 
And I would also like to note that in the report, determined through their different code and regulation examination, that elevation of the building can't be used. You can't pick up the building as it is to do something else with it. According to our town council, the first requirement of the mitigation agreement is public use. According to the language of the feasibility report that clarifies this information, and I quote, public use is a broad concept and would encompass any civic activity traditionally conducted by or sponsored by town government. And they noted that it might be more clear to see what could not be allowed. Business offices, retail shops, residences, restaurants, commercial business, town business offices. The study also spoke to many areas of the site and the building, but I've been concerned actually with the use. And I will say that all proper studies and tests that were done received satisfactory results. And you may be wondering what would happen if the town were to sell the property. These restrictions remain in place. There was a study done by the Situate Mariner, in which case they asked, what should the next step toward a new home for the senior center be? They received 145 votes. 54% <coughs> said, figure out a way for seniors to use Pier 44. As far as the community benefit, these are some of the examples that I arrived at. Of course, the Situate Council on Aging, including the GATRA program. Additional space for the overflow of recreation activities. Multi-generational events, scout activities, field trips for senior interaction. I think you've probably all heard of Adopt a Grandparent program, where local students come and meet seniors. We could have local artists showing their um, craft, and we could have a park area. Use by the Council on Aging will not preclude additional activity, but rather will enhance it. This building will be alive every day and many nights. From the Council on Aging premise, as I said, Meals on Wheels, lunch programs, the programs that they were looking for for health, but from the survey requests, the youth programs, community meetings, scout meetings, ongoing art, cultural events, programs that could be run in the evenings, weekends, and the intergenerational programs during the day. With the combination of these activities, the building will fulfill five of the suggestions on the survey. Picture a lovely park, grass, flowers, play area, seating benches, using space at the harbor side area of the parking lot for visiting and viewing. I'm certainly not an architect, but I feel that utilizing that front row of parking spaces would still leave ample room for prescribed parking. If the situation arises that the senior center would follow the future town-wide plan, then the building can be used for another activity. But in the meantime, we haven't let the building sit relatively lifeless and unused. Instead, we're setting a new path. And I believe that this is an important aspect for all of the town's residents. In concluding, I'd like to say that I think one day in the future, the town's goal for our proposed infrastructure will be realized. But first, there needs to be planning and fundraising and the building itself to be accomplished. In the meanwhile, we have a portion of our population still waiting in the wings since early in 1990 to find a more livable home away from home, a home that will not turn them away for lack of dining or recreation space, a home that will encourage health, activity, and joy for life. As we plan for our future in situate, let us learn from the people who comprise a valued segment of our population. We teach our children that they need to know their history before they create their future. Who made their present? Whose shoulders they've stood on? Who planned and voted for this town's development? 
Now it's our turn to know and to remember. It would be my honor on behalf of the senior population now, of which I am a member, as well as those who will become a senior in the town of Situate, to offer a motion at this time. I move that the Situate Harbor Community Building become the new home of the Situate Council on Aging. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for coming in. Uh, comments from the board? Thank you. Is there a response to my motion? Uh, no. I mean, I thank you. The presentation <coughs> we listened to would certainly take it into consideration. Mm -hmm. But I don't know what you mean by response to your motion. We, we can't vote on that tonight. It's not on the agenda. It's not going to be a okay. big violation so, of the open meeting law. I mean, if that's what you're looking for, we absolutely can't do that. So what would uh, be the, if I could ask, what would be the next step in your discussion as to my proposal? When, Tony, go well, ahead. I, I mean, I'll take a shot at um, You know, there's, there's a few contradictions of what you said and what we've been given information, but I think, I think overall, all of us realize that there's a need for a senior building and a senior place to go that's better than what we have now. And we've talked about this, all of us have mentioned this a hundred times. Um, and I think that a lot of the things that you mentioned, although I wasn't really clear in terms of what your plan was other than just make that the senior center, um, can occur in that building. And when we hear public use, public use is for all of the public which includes the seniors, but does not exclude everybody else. So I wouldn't be surprised at some point in time, and you ask what the next step is, the five of us have to make a decision on what we're gonna do with the building. Um, that there is some sort of component of public use, which includes the seniors. Um, I don't, well, I'm not gonna say it. Um, and I, I just think that, that we're kind of more on the same page than you're making it seem like we are in, in your discussions. Um, I think that the building can be used immediately for senior activities, and I think once we put money in it to improve it possibly, if we don't vote to knock it down, that it will be available for the seniors a great deal of the time, as well as it will be available to the youth and to other groups in the town. So I think that's gonna be a building that's gonna be able to use by all sections of the community and probably will not be segregated to any one of them, be it teenagers, seniors, businessmen, Whatever, whatever group you want to sanction out. It'll be, it'll be used or able to be used by all groups in the town, and I think that's what we've discussed ever since we've had any discussions on this topic. Um, I think at some point in time, we're just gonna have to make a decision and then move forward on it. Um, okay, can I comment on this? Sure. All of the information that, that I have, when you say this, you're not sure about, I have it all here. And, and I have the information from the MBTA. I have copies of all of their, um, everything that right. you have right. had, were sent out, I have copies of that. So what I, what I excuse me, if I could just yeah. finish. Um, I think what, what I'm proposing, as I said, according to the survey that was sent, which I'm, not sure according to the actual city CITI rules of a survey whether a thousand people in a town of 18,000 people actually constitutes a legal survey but forever <coughs> whatever the terms are I listed use continued use not segregating other groups including other groups every day of the week and so i'm not sure how what i'm saying is i, any I really than i what and maybe saying. i missed some of it i don't even know what you're saying other than let's make it the senior center well can i, can I jump, jump in no. well let me let jump me, in let me jump in let me, let me just finish one thought Tony. yeah the the um every single bit of information that you said tonight for the most part we've already gone over mm -hmm. we've spoken to the mbta way more times than you have Probably. we went through that that document way more times than you did. We went through all those matrices, you know, 
a lot. And there's no, we, I mean, I, if you look back at the minutes, you'll see the matrices are, there's a hundred of them and they're all over the place. There's no, there's no clear cut answer. They, you can't look at them and say, okay, clearly it's make it a park or clearly it's make it a, a youth center. You know, th there was all kinds of divergent data that really wasn't specific as to terms of what the building should become. And that's where it's going to come into our purview in terms of what taking that piece of data as well as other data points and figure out what we think the best use of the building is. Um, so what you're saying is when people responded to the survey yeah. and they said youth, recreation, uh, senior, art, whatever, that that there weren't those are not accurate. I'm not sure what you're you're saying when you say no, the I, def I definitely didn't were all I definitely over didn't the, say that. What I said was the matrixes there were probably 15 to 20 different matrices. Okay. All that asked different questions and the data was not it wasn't what's your favorite baseball team? Okay, clearly everyone in here thinks the Red Sox is the favorite baseball team. Let's vote for the Red Sox. That's not the way the data was was able to be um, okay. interpreted. Um, well, maybe I could ask this way. What? And I'm sorry if you don't, if I wasn't clear. Actually, as I practice this and talk to people, everybody thought it was pretty clear. So I'm well, sorry if in this delivery tonight it wasn't. But what is the the proposal that I have put forth? What would keep the board of selectmen, which you told me you are the final say in the use of this building? Why not take this proposal idea, tweak what you have to, but open it without the, um, for instance, the senior center had the knitting group in la scheduled in there last week, and they were canceled because the town wanted to do a meeting in there. I mean, I know that we have, we as the senior center have permission to make appointments ahead for the use of the building, but if those uses are taken out, then that I, doesn't yeah, help. Yeah, I don't, I don't know about that, but I'll tell you what, help me out, and maybe I'm just the slow one up here. What, give me, take three sentences and tell me your proposal. Just tell me your proposal in three sentences. I want to do what with that building? I would like to have the community, the Harbor Community Building, be for a home for the senior center, use by for overflow programs by the recreation open at night for community meetings have art and cultural displays go on have intergenerational okay, programs stop right there who who's to say that's, that's not going to happen right that that, that may, may be happen. what occurs and then I, then perhaps what what i'm asking for is and perhaps what the seniors here are asking when when will that decision be made? Let me finish. Uh, the decision will be made at some point in time in the near future when the chairman decides to put it on the agenda and us to make a decision. That's now when why, it'll be decided. Why Let me that, finish. Okay, Let me finish. Sorry, I apologize. The only part that may not work with what you're saying is it may not be where the council on aging is and it may not be called the senior center. It may be called the Situa Community Center that has the opportunity for all the things that you just mentioned. That's or not. Meaning? It might not be anything. We are, it's very simple, everybody. We have this report. As outlined when this excellent report was The feasibility report. To, yeah, the feasibility okay. report. When this excellent report was reported to us, we said we are going to deliberate on it. We're listening to people. You're one of many groups. It's a courtesy that you took the time to come before us, and it's a courtesy that we chose to listen to your time personally I was worried about the precedence being given, given you the time to come in, because I don't want the rec department and the rec group coming in. I don't want the sailors coming in next. I don't want the knitting group coming in next. I don't want every single group coming in here next arguing for the use of that building. Okay? We are going to make the decision. We're going to make, I understand completely your, uh, I guess, frustration and wanting to know the time frame. Okay? We're discussing it. We are going to be discussing it in public session coming up, as Mr. Vignani said. There are many options reported in here. As Mr. Vignani said, we have a lot more information than it might appear. Um, our town councils discuss with MBTA, our town administrators discuss with MBTA. 
We've looked at a lot of this stuff. The committee includes environmental people who are aware of building impacts, the building inspector, and, and costs of money to renovate the building to make it safe if we keep that building and so on. The next step is we're looking at these options. We're going to have a public meeting where we're going to sit up here and deliberate. We'll take feedback from the audience. And at some point, one of us is going to make a motion to say, I move that we decide to make it a community center. Or someone's going to move to tear it down and put up the other option they recommend. Or someone's going to move that we make it a community center or what have you. That's what's going to happen. It's very, very clear. That's all there is to it, period. So I think your feedback you gave us, I welcome you coming in before us. But there's no way in heck we're going to be sitting here and you have a motion that says you want to make this to be the senior center. We're going to sit there and go, yes. I mean, in addition to all the legal restrictions Mr. Norton said about it not being on the agenda item and that motion would have to come from us and all that sort of thing, we're not going to do that now. Okay. You know? So at least I'm not. Maybe you guys are, but I'd vote against it. Okay? I'd vote against anything, anybody making a motion about anything, to tear it down right now or to do anything about that. So. You know, that's basically it. One thing I do agree with you guys on completely, and I think I speak for the board, I'm pretty sure I speak for the board on this, is there's a very real need and a growing need for a place, as Mr. Vignani just said, for seniors that has their own place, Council on Aging, uh, other facilities, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I completely agree. The, the Brook Street location stinks. It's literally and everything else, okay? We are, are, as you've heard, and I would like to hear some support for this from you folks as well, that a senior center figures prominently in our grand building plan in terms of what to do with gates and all that sort of thing. And whether it's at the gates building or whether it's at Pier 44 or whatever. You folks are very, very prominent in our minds as we go through the grand plan. And that's extremely important for you to know that you're not being shuttled to the side. You are being paid attention to. You're getting a lot of attention first and foremost. We've got the Gatra thing we just talked about as you articulated. We get it. There's a real need. Whether that need goes into that location, let alone that building, right, remains to be seen. And we as a board will discuss and decide that. But it's not happening tonight. And it's all in the report. And the next step is for us to decide what we want to do with it, and then we turn it back to this excellent group of citizens who volunteered their time, and includes environmental engineers, instructional engineers, all this sort of stuff. Then we turn it back to them and say, all right, this is what the five of us, or at least three of us, right, feel we want to do. Evaluate the, uh, whether we can do that and how much it would cost and how to do it and how to make that happen. That's the next step. And, and you have nothing to suggest to these people on a time frame of that? I defer to the chair on that. We're, we're going to do it as soon as we can. As, as Mr. Murray mentioned, we, we're putting this all into, we have money is being spent now, <clears throat> a great deal of money, uh, and energy being put into this thought, this idea on, uh, on putting a lot of different departments into Gate School, mm -hmm. building a new junior high. It's a, very involved thing. As Mr. Murray said, the senior center's involvement in that is paramount. It's, it's very important. Uh, we would love to see if that, if that plan goes forward, if it goes forward, depending upon finances and other things, uh, we would love to see the best senior center in the state of Massachusetts Absolutely. in that facility. And so a is it likely that a decision on the use of the community building will not be made no. until you decide no. on the feasibility studies? No, no, it will be made very shortly. Great. Okay, John, your point? Yeah, I, I was just going to say, I <coughs> appreciated your pr presentation. I have a question, a few questions for the future me meeting, but, you know, to be candid, we can't vote on it tonight, and that's because, first of all, it's a presentation. Mm -hmm. This isn't a vote on the issue. This is a presentation that you came before us, which is well done. But there are many other people who weren't aware if we're going to vote on it tonight, we'd almost be accused of sandbagging other interests and everything. So we're going to have a meeting on it. We've said that. The date's going to be coming up. Um, I would think it would be more towards after the summer, after August, because people come and go with vacation. So a lot of people want to be here. So probably in the, sp in the fall. That'll be through the chair. Um, but with respect to your presentation, one thing I'd like to see or hear you, I know you've got material there, but when you're talking about the bereavement sessions, the uh, respite, the Meals on Wheels, health and nutrients. I can't, I'm sorry, go ahead. Sure. Could you speak a little louder? Sure, <laughs> I'm saying that when you're talking about the bereavement sessions, mm -hmm. the respite care, mm -hmm. 
-hmm. the Meals on Wheels, the health and nutrient uh, programming that you're talking about, the kind of like a social where you can have a big screen TV. What I'd like to see is, you know, what you, are you looking for spatially and able to do these programs? Meals on Wheels needs a kitchen. Obviously, that's something that you don't necessarily have down at the, uh, you have it, but it's, it's, it's not large it's not enough. So I'd like to right. see no what, kind of, what kind of square footage do you need to use to run that program? Mm -hmm. How regularly will you run that program? And I think that's probably more a function from Florence Choke mm -hmm. that needs to present it because if, if you're suggesting that's something that should be used down there, I need to see that data, okay? Mm -hmm. I'm not saying I'm c convinced that it will be, but I mean, certainly it's a consideration. How many times a week is it going to be used? That type of thing. Um, so I, I would ask that when we have that meeting. How many times a week the kitchen would be used? Or you said something about Well, if you're going to do Meals on Wheels, is it every day? Is it going to be two times a day? So things are like this. <coughs> the same with the social, clarified. all these yeah. type of things. Like what are you proposing with these programs? Because it's going to be using, you're proposing that it will be used here. I'd like to know that information. Mm -hmm. So again, I, I, I appreciate it. As I say, it. I'm giving a wish list of what, what the um, council has told me that they would like to do. And, and that's what I, we, I'd like to see. And when we finally make that, uh, we take a look at it with you folks, we'll tell you when the meeting is, pr probably, probably needs to be in a bigger uh, location than here, but at least um, I'd like to see that as a part of the, uh, prior to our hearing, if that's okay. We're, we are approaching, Sean. No, go ahead. We are approaching about 40 minutes on this now, and it's almost double what we normally do, but I that's fine. I appreciate your time. That's fine. It's well worth it. Just uh, I'm just saying that to let everyone know we're going to probably start wrapping it up. Just a couple of comments, Ellen. You said it twice, and it, and it bothered me twice. Uh-oh. No, and, 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 and I'm, I think I'm speaking for some others. The overflow of recreation, all right? The, the, the rec there are 3,000-plus children that go through Jennifer's programs. Mm -hmm. I, for one, if I was going to support anything, I think those that organization, Recreation Department, would need use of that building and have as much use of that building as the seniors and other groups that you mentioned. But that's a huge, huge group of youngsters that go through those programs. Secondly, um, the reason I think you really should take our time is because you may know it, others may not. I don't want to spend another $200,000 to get wasted. Do you know what I'm talking about? $200,000 to get wasted? Yes, to be wasted. You know what I'm referring to? The set of plans that we spent for the pro, you know, for the building next to the central school. That's, I think, two $250,000 that we can't do anything with. My point is, Whatever I don't, um, I can't speak to that. No, I know, I no, know no. But I'm, what I'm saying is, I remember the gentleman stood up at town meeting, and he said, "This is great, but what if you know we go through this and we don't follow through and we don't have the building built?" So we do have a set of plans that are sitting on the shelf that cost the town two two hundred fifty thousand mm -hmm. dollars. I don't want to make that same mistake again. Mm -hmm. Whatever we do, I just want you know, to. It's, it's, want to do it's it difficult right. to hear everything with the air conditioning when no, people talk. No, I understand it what you were saying. Difficult. The first thing you said about the the recreation. Right. Um, I, I've had children. I have grandchildren. I understand the importance of that. And three thousand children certainly are important. But as I said, I think we have to think about what we te have taught our children, mm -hmm. and we have almost 5,000 seniors, and that we know is going to increase, and that's 30%. And over the next eight or nine years till, till the whole town program would be completed is going to go much oh, higher. Right. I, agree. I agree. So I think it's, it's a segment of need that um, that have been quiet for a very long time. And I think the senior population has, as I said to Mr. Norton, they have found their voice and they want to be heard. And I'm, tonight, I'm just the conduit for that. Mm -hmm. I appreciate your time. I thank you very much. And I would appreciate your consideration in the near future. If I have just thank 10 you. quick seconds. I think in the outcome, you're probably going to find it may even be better than what you're thinking. because. The need is here. We all recognize the need. The building is there, and it may not be structured exactly the way you want it, but the programming and the services that are needed by the seniors and a facility for that 
are all on high on the agenda. So we're very well aware of it and we're aware of the space requirements and it, I think it's gonna move quickly in the right direction. So don't give up so. on it. I hope so because I think 440 square feet to 3,100 square feet. Well, we, we've, been, we've been through the numbers. Thank I you. appreciate you coming Actually, in. Thank you all for coming in. Rick, you want to? Very quick. Very quick. Very quick. I just want to make sure incorrect numbers don't get out there. 5,000 people, which is a big number, is not 33% of the town's population. It's 25%. That's so and some other some other the other well it's, okay. it's well noted just make sure the numbers are accurate all right moving on to the next agenda item you're all welcome to stay if you'd like 11 is postponed mr. chair I believe 11 is postponed you're all welcome to stay <laughs> why don't we just wait till yeah You don't have to go home, but you can't stay here, so just so we can. <laughs> All right. <laughs> By the way, while, we, while the room's being cleared, I just want to welcome uh, Katie Albanese, our new TV camera operator who's taking over for Zach. So thank you for coming in. We all welcome you, and good luck with it. We uh, hope this is a good example of town government for you, Katie. I'm not. <laughs> uh, we, we have uh postponing discussion of the uh number 11 the revenue allocation for solar and winter but going to number 12 the uh this is a issue with your charge a possible issue we give a charge to a situate housing authority member i know uh that all the board has received uh a letter a series of letters from the housing authority i know the board has all read those letters uh what those letters ask is that a hearing be held uh, on the possible uh, removal of one of their members, uh, Mary Lewis. Uh, the hearing would have to be held more than 14 days in the future. Uh, the letters ask that the boards, that the board uh, follow the suggestion of the Housing Authority and issue this uh, notice of a public meeting for the purpose of dismissal. So a motion? I'd like a motion, please. Um, move that the Board of Selectmen set a date for a meeting to discuss the Housing Authority request um, as stated in their documentation. With, Second. With the Housing Authority present, isn't that correct? That would they would be here also. Right. Yeah. They would present. It would be almost like a, a right. hearing, sure. and that they would present their case, and uh, Marianne would present hers. And okay. Should we set the date here? I'd like to set the date too, if we could possibly reach an agreement on a date. I thought of a few dates. I know it's an awful difficult time with vacations uh, and extra meetings, etc. But I was the one we discussed, August seventh at five thirty. If that's agreeable right. to the board, it would be agreeable August to 7th. me. August seventh. At 5 30. That's a meeting night. Tuesday night. And we'd meet an hour. Early scheduled meeting. Yeah, we'd meet, we'd meet an hour and a half earlier and have the hearing. Can you make it? Before your regularly scheduled meeting? Before our regular scheduled meeting. So like 6? 5 30. 5 30. Is that agreeable to the board? Yes. Then it will be on August 7th at 5 30. And that's 14 days. Is that more than 14? Okay, so second. Second. I'm sorry. Okay, the motion has been made and seconded to issue charges and set a hearing date of August 7th for the hearing on Marianne Lewis's uh, dismissal from the Housing Authority per the request of the Housing Authority. Motion has been made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. Thank you. Next. Move that the board select and vote to grant sewer betterment deferral number 12-2. Second. Motion been made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? It's unanimous. Moving right along. Uh, appointments Republican, Democrat, supplemental town election workers, and then <coughs> the applicants we met tonight, conservation, public building, and renewable energy. 
Move the Board of Selectmen appoint Richard Harding to the Conservation Commission. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Move the Board of Selectmen appoint Jacqueline Carr to the Public Building Commission. Second. Motion was made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Move the Board of Selectmen appoint Justin Morin or Moran to the Renewable Energy Committee. Second. Uh, motion was made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. It's unanimous. Move the Board of Selectmen appoint John Murphy and William Schmidt as associate members of the Waterways Commission. Second. Motion was made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. It's unanimous. Move the Board of Selectmen appoint Republican, Democratic, unenrolled, and supplemental town election workers per the list provided by their respective committees and the town clerk. Second. Second. Motion was made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Thank you. Thank you to all the applicants that applied. We appreciate that very much. Invaluable to the town, these committees. Invaluable. Uh, I like the fact that a lot of these people were new. Yeah, to yeah. The town. That's, that's encouraging. That's <coughs> oh, <it's> great. <coughs> that is great. Uh, correspondence, I just don't have anything under correspondence except that we did receive a letter that I am just going to paraphrase now. No, it's uh, a letter from a resident uh, directed to our veterans agent, Don, and, uh, and uh, Chris Chessia, thanking them immensely for the work they did on this family's behalf. They, they went above and beyond this family's request. They did uh, much more than, than the average person would do, believe me. They did a great job in the family greatly appreciated it without getting into names or any of that business uh, we thank them for going out of their way helping this family Joe uh, you want that letter read? Uh, David Ball go ahead am I the clerk? well who's the clerk? no John's no I, clerk. I'd be happy to read it John's the clerk I don't <laughs> on behalf of the Citroen Historical Society and everyone else involved with um, moving the Massachusetts Humane Society Boathouse number 23 I want to thank you so very much for offering your services of your company. And this is to Mr. Glancy from uh, Glancy Crane and Rigging. Um, and for all the effort you made in making the move a huge success. What seems like a daunting task to many, you and your company made easy. It was truly impressive that your crew was able to lift by crane and move the boathouse 50 feet in less than two hours. Our contractor told me that this was very impress impressive and with the way your crew moved the building and set it perfectly on the newly installed pilings. It is my intent to let the town officials know of your generosity in moving the building without any cost to the town and that the move was so successful. Too often individuals and companies offer their services to the town and they don't receive proper thank you. Again, thank you so much for everything you did. Sincerely, David Ball, um, uh, Situate Hors Historical Society. Joe, uh, can I just, that that's probably being modest. That's. Um, very nice of Dave. Probably does does I know he does many more things than that. Doesn't get recognized. Um, I, I just you know that that was a big job. I did very quick. And that's the boathouse used by uh, recreation. That's correct. For the sailing programs right. and everything. Yep. Yeah. Great. Anyone Much else? Or anything else on the other business? Would like to bring up? Just one quick thing. I want to thank recreation for getting. They had a great concert last week, and uh, the gathering played at the. Um, Cole Parkway at the bandstand and it was a, a really good turnout it was a hot night but they played for a couple hours and it was wonderful and events like that really show the community coming together and I'm, I'm glad that the rec uh, had had something to do with that and uh, and I hope they keep doing it thank you uh, minutes. next minutes minutes move the minutes of June 18th 2012 second all in favor aye aye opposed Unanimous. Abstain, Kim. And move the executive session minutes of June 19th, 2012. Second. Good discussion. All in favor? Aye. There were only three of us, isn't there? Right. I think yeah, really yeah, stay. Move the board of selectmen vote to adjourn the meeting at 9.17 p.m. Do we have anything to sign? Second. Yes. Oh. So after we sign. At, move to adjourn the meeting after we sign the documents that Ms. Kim Donovan is graciously going to provide us the opportunity to sign. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you, folks. Good night. Done.
Our work is done.